Oxford Fs to show you how some things could shake out depending on the, the kind of weather in your league. So, Marcus, what are you looking at here? Yeah, well, we're going to go do something different here, right? I mean, a lot of times you see the, the running backs come off the board first. Jonathan Taylor, not really a surprise. But every now and then somebody throws a curveball. Our own Michael F. Florio did this in a draft we had together. Oh. Justin Jefferson with a number one overall pick with a huge ceiling this year. So, at that point, if Jonathan Taylor falls to you at number two, I mean, why wouldn't you do that? So, we go Christian McCaffrey at three. This is where things get a little bit dicey, though. So I would say you would see a Cooper Cup, perhaps, at the number four spot. So let's put Cooper Cup uh, in here over at number four. And look, I understand what he did last year was amazing. And, and maybe he doesn't do that again, right? I mean, look, he was the number one wide receiver by about 95 points ahead of Devontae Adams as the second best wideout effective. in fantasy football. That's effective, right? Even if he doesn't do that this year. He's still going to be good enough that he's worth putting in your top five, certainly as the second wide receiver off the board. All right, so he's at number four there. At number five, I'm going to go with another wide receiver here and Jamar Chase because I feel like what's going to happen is you're going to see a couple of these wide receivers off the board. Somebody's going to get a little bit antsy, and maybe they go Jamar Chase right there. At number six, we're back to running backs. Austin Eckler, who uh, I love as a top three running back this year, but, you know, you got these wide receivers going early. He's going to fall a little bit. Also falling, Derek Henry. And I know people sort of ask about the injury situation last year, but last year was the first time he'd really missed any significant time with any kind of injury. Before that, he was the number one running back in all of fantasy football. And moreover, they were throwing him the ball last year more than they ever had. So if he comes back, looks like that same guy, is getting those same number of targets, he really has incredible upside. And if he falls to you at number seven, uh, thank everybody for the discount at that point. <laughs> Uh, let's finish out the top 10, though. We'll go Stefan Diggs, who uh, had his first ever career double-digit touchdown season last year in Buffalo at number nine. We'll put in Dalvin Cook, who uh, you know has one of the safer floors you're ever going to talk about at the running back position. And at number 10, we'll go Devontae Adams, that guy who uh, you know had 120 catches, 1,500 yards, 11 touchdowns, and like I said, was about 100 points behind Cooper Cup. Ho-hum. Ho-hum. You know, no big deal. Whatever. <laughs> and that's, you see the way that Marcus's draft shakes out depending on the, you see a lot of wide receivers especially wide receiver going number one overall that's the trend that's the way that the things look Marcus let's switch over to what I would look at here and this league is a league where people are valuing the ground and pound they believe the running back <laughs> is how you win in fantasy football and so I look obviously you start with JT CMC slides into the number two spot but I We'll have a little bit of a curveball and say Najee Harris gives you an opportunity to get a guy who's going to be such a large part of an offense where we don't necessarily know who the starting quarterback is going to be. We know who's going to get a majority of the touches at the running back position. And then we're going to keep things going in the running back. Marcus just mentioned it. Derrick Henry has been so consistent for so long. He has the one injury blip in last season, has the surgery, comes back, plays in the playoffs, not quite 100%. Hopefully we see a healthy and happy King Henry. And then you continue down the running back opportunity list. And that, again, the grounded pound league. And Marcus <laughs> mentioned Dalvin Cook. Yes, it's a new coach. Mike Zimmer's gone. It's not as much a, hey, run the ball, or I'm going to fire you as an offensive coordinator. <laughs> but still, we, we get a valuable piece of the running game in an offense that we do believe is going to be better. And yeah, features a couple of players that you're going to have in the top 10 of most fantasy drafts, no matter what. So you, you get Dalvin Cook. And then keeping the running back trend going, Austin Eckler uh, there at number six. And that's where things start to get a little bit if even if you believe passionately in the running back position the value is just so incredibly slanted there you have to have Justin Jefferson go off the board at that point because again all Vikings all the time. <laughs> I just want pieces of this offense, Mark. I mean, look, Kevin O'Connell comes, takes over there. You got Justin Jefferson throwing shades, saying, oh, I see why Cooper Cup was able to get open so much, right? So uh, I love his upside, love his ceiling. I don't think he's hit his ceiling yet, so I'm looking forward to this year. And, and more value opportunity. You get, again, the guy who just had the best fantasy football <laughs> season in the history of wide receivers, and that's because of the way that the league shakes out. You get to have Cooper Cup at the eighth spot, and then you can kind of start to get back into the value. I think DeAndre Swift Ooh. offers so much uh, fantasy value. Of course, he's going to split carries, but he, he comes out of the backfield. Jared Goff's going to have a better season. Lions offense is going to be better as well. And then consistency. You want to see a guy stay in the same offense, or so, but it's Devontae Adams. You just have to have Tay in the top 10 because he's Devo he's Devontae Adams. He's Devontae you, Adams. You just have to have him. It doesn't matter if he's in Green Bay or, or, or Las Vegas. I mean, I don't know if you've heard. He's got his old college buddy throwing him the they football They know each other? Year. They've met before, believe it or not. Uh, speaking of people we've met, uh, let's send it over to Kimmy Chuck. <laughs> Hi, guys.